Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the newest flying kayak flying vlog. Once again from the home cockpit. Today we're going to talk about something that might interest a few of you flight simulation fans out there who are looking to upgrade their setup. I started flight simulation back in 2014 roundabout and one of the first things I really needed was a yoke or a stick something with which to control my diverse simulation aircraft. Back then my choice fell upon this trusty little Thrustmaster T-Flight HOTAS X. This is a hands-on throttle and stick system meaning that you can control most of the aircraft's important features directly from the stick without any need to take your hands off of the stick or the throttle. Back then, it was a sensible choice. It only cost about $40 on Amazon, it was fairly quick to arrive, and it seemed like a small and not really pricey option to get a lot of realism in the simulator. Over the years since then, however, I have noticed a few things that I didn't like too much about this stick, so very recently, I decided to make the switch and upgrade to something a little bigger the SciTech ProFlight Yoke System and Throttle Quadrant. In today's video, I kind of wanted to talk about the differences that I've noticed in just a few days of using a yoke, and why you might want to consider to purchase a yoke yourself if you want to really enhance your flight simulation experience. Starting out with the T-Flight HOTAS X, Back when I bought this, this was fairly cheap. Now I think the price has risen to $60 and maybe even $80 if you're buying it new, depending on where you're getting it. But it still is a solid choice. Obviously, it's on the cheaper side of flight controls, so it doesn't have awesome and complex machinery. It just is basically a very simple plastic joystick. When flying with it, you'll quickly notice that many aircraft, especially general aviation aircraft and Boeing airliners, don't actually use sticks to control them, and most certainly not a HOTAS system or hands-on throttle and stick system. Most airliners have throttles and sticks that aren't designed to keep your hands on them throughout the entire flight. The only airliners that might be remotely realistic to fly with such a stick system would be Airbus airliners and general aviation aircraft like some ultralight airplanes which use flight sticks as their primary control method. Of course for military airplanes a HOTAS system is always your first choice because that's basically what a military aircraft system has. It has a so-called HOTAS system as its main system for controlling the aircraft. However, I myself don't fly military airplanes a lot in flight sim, so I quickly realized the limitations of this stick. It lacks precision. This is a very simple thing. When I move the ProFlight yoke system, I can move it to 45 degrees either side, and I can push it in and out quite a bit. On this stick, however, I just quickly move this a bit closer, and I just super quick pop out my microphone and place it over there. On this HOTAS system I can barely move the stick a few inches to each side. Definitely not as large ranges of movement as I'd have with the yoke system. Now that doesn't seem like a big deal. After all, I can still control the aircraft throughout the entire range of motion of its flight controls with both devices. The thing is, if I move the throttle, sorry, if I move the HOTAS system stick for about a centimeter to the side, then the flight control in the real airplane will deflect as if I move the stick several centimeters. With the yoke system, if I move the stick a centimeter to the side or the yoke a centimeter down, then that will act like I moved the actual aircraft system only about two centimeters downward. So this will work with much higher precision and a much greater resolution in the actual airplane. And I've noticed this as a big difference when flying. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. 
The next thing that you'll quickly notice is that a yoke does feel very different to a HOTAS system. First off, you're using an entirely different hand. I'm using my left hand to fly and my right hand to apply a throttle inputs with a yoke system. On the HOTAS, it's exactly the other way around. So very quickly, the question arises, what is more realistic in terms of general aviation and airliner aircraft? If you're flying from the captain's seat, then it's definitely the yoke. The next question that came up to me was, well, do they actually feel different in your hands when you're flying the aircraft? And the answer to that question is and remains to be yes. The yoke system feels very different and actually a little harder to control than with the HOTAS system, simply because you'll need a lot more travel. On the HOTAS system, especially on approach, you could control the aircraft with barely touches of your fingertips. With the yoke system, you'll really need to move it to see the effects. But that also allows for much more precise movement with the yoke than with the HOTAS, and that's an especial advantage when you're flying the aircraft in a cruising state. Okay, so I've talked about the comparison between what a HOTAS does and what a stick does in the aircraft quite a lot. But here's the thing. Yoke systems are really expensive. They start at about 140 euros new, whereas this Thrustmaster HOTAS system, I could get that for 60 or 80 euros at my local hardware store or even online, and I could find them even cheaper if I start going on a bargain hunt. But is that still true? Well, this ProFlight yoke system has been around for about 14 years, I believe now. It started in 2006, I think, which would be the same year that FSX released, if I'm not mistaken. So this is a fairly old system. It has been improved over time, but not necessarily by a lot. It's still more or less the same system. What I did was I went online and I looked for used yoke systems, because usually these systems do have surprising longevity, especially if they are well taken care of. After all, you usually wouldn't drop something like this as it's most often installed on a stationary desk and not moved around a lot. I found this specific system from a seller who told me that he'd rarely used it over the past few years and it had spent most of its time in storage. So it was kept in good condition and it wasn't used too much. That seller also said that he'd sell it for a price of approximately 80 euros adding shipment that would come to approximately 86 euros in total paying for the yoke and the throttle system as well as table mounts which I'm not using here at the moment I've done instead I've stuck it to my desk because the table mount doesn't fit around so for me it became a very simple choice use the yoke for 80 euros or replace the HOTAS with another HOTAS system which would cost at least 80 or 60 euros and in the end my decision came upon the yoke. In general, what I wanted to do with this video was kind of give you a perspective of what it's like to fly with a HOTAS system and how that differs when you fly an aircraft with a yoke system. Previously on my YouTube channel, all of my flights have been done using the HOTAS system. Now, all my flights will be done using the yoke system. When I started flying with the yoke system a few days ago, it was like I had to learn it all over again. My muscle memory was completely off and I could barely maintain a straight and level flight, let alone turn the aircraft safely or even land. I actually had huge difficulties getting the airplane lined up for the runway and setting it down on that same runway then and making a halfway soft landing. And I had vast issues controlling speed on approach because the yoke simply feels much more realistic due to its higher precision and the fact that with the yoke you can now much more easily well imagine what the real aircraft controls would be doing and you can trim the aircraft accordingly if you want to see a comparison between me flying this with a stick and with a yoke you can take a look at one of my older videos which i'm going to put a link to either in an info box up ahead or in my video description down below probably in both, and I then will now fly a traffic pattern using the yoke system and I'll discuss the differences whilst doing so. If you want to see more of that, stay tuned and I hope you enjoy this video.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in X Plane 11, and now we're gonna go and see how different it is to actually fly a normal traffic pattern. In our case here, it's Stuttgart International Airport, using a yoke instead of my usual HOTAS system. In case you're interested in seeing how I do it with the HOTAS, you can take a look at my previous traffic pattern video, which I'm going to put a link in the description below and hopefully up in the corner of the video. And um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead, start the engines, taxi out to the runway, and off we go, flying a normal traffic pattern in a normal Cessna 172 using the ProFlight yoke system. All right. I just wanted to talk about this for a second. Already whilst taxiing, you can see a significant difference, at least from the operator's perspective. It feels much more realistic to be adjusting my throttles, mixtures, and on bigger airplanes, of course, my prop levers, utilizing the throttle quadrant included in the ProFlight yoke system. So this already feels ages better than anything that I could achieve with the HOTAS system. Mapping some switches to those buttons uh, that are additional on these yoke systems, of course, even further provides more realism. So in general, just taxiing the airplane feels a lot more like what I would imagine taxiing a real airplane would feel like. In general, it just is a much more enjoyable perspective and experience. Even leaning the mixture during taxi as you would on a real airplane is just much more realistic and smooth if you have a dedicated mixture lever and are not clicking up and down switches or fumbling for levers in the cockpit using a mouse interface. In general, this just feels much more like the real deal, in my opinion, and offers a totally new perspective on how to operate airplanes in the flight sim. In general, I'm going to get right back to you guys once I've set myself up for departure and we're going to talk about that in just a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the flight deck. We're just about ready to take off and have a look at what changes when you're using a yoke instead of a HOTAS. All right, I'm going to release the brakes and I'm going to start applying throttle. Now, with my rudder pedals, which I did have previously and also used together with the HOTAS system, I'm going to try and maintain center line here. And smoothly pull back on the yoke and hold it for rotation. And coming back on the power. Already this feels much more sensitive and aside from a smoother rotation of course and a much more precise takeoff roll control, the thing that you immediately notice upon using a yoke instead of a HOTAS stick is that it's just that much easier to smoothly apply all of the transitions. Now I'm just going to trim her backwards a sweet little bit. You can use your trim on the yoke just as a real pilot would in the real airplane to maintain that. And I'm going to pull power back a bit further and I'm going to retract my first notch of flaps as I'm already at a very safe altitude above my specific um, airport. Alright, now I see that torque is a thing so I can just use my rudder pedals to compensate for that real quick and I can use my yoke to compensate a bit further so that my one wing isn't always hanging down, which would obviously cause slight course deviations throughout the flight. Now, in the next step, I've retracted my flaps, I've set myself up power-wise, I'm setting myself up on a climb, and all I need to do is turn to the left very slightly so that I can start to set myself up for a traffic pattern here at Stuttgart International Airport. I have a 3,000 meter or more than 10,000 foot long runway, so for this tiny Cessna 172, this should not be a real issue at all. Okay, I'm just turning left a bit, turning left, turning left, just quietly reducing my climb a bit by taking out my power and trimming backwards. It just feels so much more realistic when you compare this to flying with a HOTAS system. 
it isn't really quantifiable, but the terrain is just much more precise and smooth, and it's much easier to maintain a level altitude, because not every touch on the yoke will produce a huge jerking movement in the aircraft. Unlike every touch well, on the hotas, or in this case on the rudder pedals, which aren't too precise either, would produce a giant jerking movement in the sim. Now I'm just going to continue to trim back a bit, because I want to maintain a lower airspeed, as I don't need all of that airspeed. And I can just use my yoke ever so slightly to correct for the torque every few seconds here, trimming back even further so that my airspeed goes down a bit, reducing my power a bit so that I can maintain my level flight altitude, and I'm happy with my setup right now. Now I've mapped a few other buttons to different um, buttons in the cockpit. For example, I mapped my generator button. I could turn off my alternator here and turn it back on. Whoop! Oh dear. I think I might have just broken an avionics piece. Oh well. Um, so, pro tip, um, don't do this in SimCoder Cessna 172, because in the SimCoder Cessna 172 that will actually cause a failure. Alright, I'm wondering which part of my avionics actually failed right now. Okay, well, I'm going to leave this in the video so that you guys can see um, what happens when you're not considerate of what you're throwing. I thought that turning on and off the alternator in flight was going to be a simple exercise that would show you guys how you can use the stick and yoke and map everything up. No, oh dear. Well, that didn't work too well been turning a bit off heading as well, so I'm just going to turn slightly to the left here so that I stay on approximately the reciprocal heading of the runway heading and I can start out by descending a bit. Alright, then let's land before my avionics fail completely and let's see how well this works or doesn't work. And let's never turn on and off the alternator in flight again. <laughs> oh dear. Well, good thing that this is a flight simulator and that I'm not actually flying a real world airplane, right? Okay. So I've got myself in fairly level flight, got my flight controls coordinated, I'm in a descent, and I'm using this stick or the button on my yoke to retract or to actually extend my flaps by one notch and continue my descent. I'm setting myself up for a nice and long final here so that I have more than enough time. And I'm going to go ahead and start a soft turn over to runway heading. I'm going to need to put in a bit more power to maintain my altitude bit more and more power. Oh, actually I want to take out a bit of power because I do want to decelerate the airplane as well as losing altitude here. So take out some more power. And the power pitch relationship really, the yoke really brings that forward in a way that really never was represented by the HOTAS system. Simply because you didn't have precise enough pitch controls in the HOTAS system. Which is why I always notice immediately with the yoke that it's just a vast difference between using, oh, turned a bit too far over there, between using a yoke system and using the actual HOTAS system. Oh dear, this is going to be a terribly long landing because I turned much too soon. But that's all not a problem. I'm just going to do a bit of a turn here over to the runway heading. Uh, putting in a bit of rudder. Alright, so what I'm currently trying to do is basically descend and decelerate, uh, which I kind of messed up, but that's okay, I've got a very long runway. Now this is a terrible landing, or this is a terrible approach to be honest, but I'm just going to leave it in, because I wanted to show you guys that I was much better at this once, flying with a HOTAS system, and that has changed a lot, because now I'm not very good at this anymore. Well, it might actually work out a bit, because I changed my flight control. And this just feels a lot more realistic, it feels a lot better, and it feels a lot more like the real deal. So I have a feeling that this might actually improve how the flight simulator helps me prepare for future real-world flight training. And I'm really interested to see that once I do get into real-world flight training, which I hope isn't too far away. And then I will tell you guys how exactly this all worked out for me concentrate a bit, set her down, I got a bit of a crosswind going here, come on, come on,
Alright, it was definitely not my best landing, but it certainly was a landing. Anyways, thanks for joining me on this short trip of taking a good look at um, how flying a flight sim with a yoke actually works and how that actually feels a lot different to what I'd be capable of doing with the HOTAS system and why I personally believe that is the case. Anyways, see you next time and safe travels, blue skies, and many happy landings to all of you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you're not too appalled by my terrible landing skills. See you next time.